Says so road either way. What happened with those alien prequel films? I think for the most part, I still think Prometheus and Alien Covenant are mixed bags in their own rights. Prometheus, I still quite a bit enjoy just because it's just a big budget sci-fi film that's not Marvel or DC. And it's directed by Ridley Scott, so the mystery, the horror elements are all just on their A-point, and some elements of the Prometheus script are still good. The exploration of creation, religion, who created us, aliens, just the sense of wonder in space uh, is done really well in Prometheus. What Alien Covenant does well is just c- c- kind of getting back to the the horror the horror roots of just complete chaos. It's a cautionary tale of exploration. But yeah, the the Alien prequels were very fascinating to me because they they coasted off the success of the original films and spe- specifically the the casual world building of the OG OG Alien film that came out in 1979. My interest with Alien films actually started with Prometheus and more specifically the trailers for Prometheus because I thought they were just, they did what a trailer did, they, they piqued my interest and I, I just had to see them and I don't think I saw Prometheus until at least five years until it came out because it came out in 2012 and I was too young to see it. I was just a wee little lad so it was, there was no way I was going to be able to see that, at least the with my parents' permission. Um, you didn't hear that. And then I, I kind of, I, I, I remember watching the trailer for Alien, 1979 trailer, and I was like, that music sounds very familiar. The, the <laughs> Maybe we'll put the actual sound on there because I probably can't replicate it that well. And I was like, wait, are these connected? And it just blew my mind, kind of... The Avengers didn't blow my mind, I don't know why, for some reason, the, the, the connecting of films, but for some reason, that blew my mind, that this Prometheus film and Alien were connected in some way. And it wasn't... Yeah, I could tell it wasn't like a direct sequel or anything, because they look completely different. I watched Alien, and I completely fell in love with it. Alien is still my... Probably my favorite 70s film. It's probably still my favorite horror film. On aesthetic alone, 10 out of 10. If we're putting numbers to it, which we don't have to, but it's exactly how to build a horror film creature or not. And the amounts that you show it, the building of tension, the building of characters, the way that they set up Sigourney Reaver's character, or in the lack of setup in her, where you have no idea that she's going to be the last one to make it out, I think is amazing. Even though I think when I still watched it, Sigourney Reaver was famous enough that I was like, oh, okay, she's obviously going to survive this. But even then, for, I mean, for audiences in 1979, I imagine it was just... Speaking of trailers again, I think the trailer to Alien is maybe one of the best to ever do it. Just take a look at that, the original 1979 trailer. So the entire concept of Prometheus is seemingly built around the space jockey that they encounter uh, in the ship in the first alien. It's just some old skeleton in a chair. They didn't follow up on the dude or try to figure anything else out. That concept alone is interesting to catapult for this new series. And I think we are seeing a a little bit of a renaissance here with these two films because the the genius of them both lie in David, uh, played by Michael Fassbender. The implications of AI and replicants, uh, not synthetics, completely different things, are very relevant today. Prometheus, it's, not, it's complicated. Prometheus is just complicated because you, you just love to see an excited space crew going to a new planet, stepping in a new world. Prometheus grabs into the ancient aliens of that the cave drawings that you know from um, the native people and almost every country have their deities are coming from the stars you know whether that's a metaphor or literal people historians have always been uh, trying to figure that out you know at least been raising that question of 
what if this actually is literal, not a metaphor? And Prometheus, you know, takes that concept literally. They send out a little space crew to find their creators, or at least who they think are people that have visited us in the past. The connections to Alien were really done well, because it's not overt. You see the ship, uh, or you don't even see the ship, you, you don't, they get into this weird structure, and it's not even until Idris Elba's character, does the, they get the little, the little mapping things going out, and they realize that there's like a ship, that round ship, you're like, oh... You know, it's it, even in the marketing, it, I think it wasn't quite clear how it connected. They, they raise a lot of interesting questions, and having the main character, a person of Christian faith, is also very fascinating. What's her name? The, the fill-in-the-blank, androgynous haircut female character in every alien film. <laughs> Elizabeth Shaw, of course. I mean, that's actually, actually also just another great name Ellen Ripley you know those are just great names great characters but Ellen, Elizabeth Shaw like she's a person of Christian faith and she's going out to look for people that possibly created humanity which doesn't this contradict your entire belief system and to that she asks who made them she's like well yeah that makes sense like there's still there's still not a um a solid answer for finding a alien life. I think that's what's great about Prometheus because it's just nothing's finite. Nothing is for certain. It makes a point that there's nothing out there that can totally disprove of everything or prove everything is right when you're thinking in the grand scheme of things. The, re the renaissance that we're kind of seeing now is with David, Michael Fassbender's character. He's very fascinating. The, the Prometheus doesn't quite work without its sister film, Alien Covenant, or its actual direct sequel, which f fumbles the bag in many other ways, but it, what it doesn't fumble is the exploration of creation, a synthetic artificial intelligence, gaining a conscience enough to where they are feeling jealous, basically, of not being able to create life. They feel more powerful than humans, as he says to his creator, you are a human, you created me, but I will outlive you. You know, what does that say? The, this frustrating things about Prometheus is the other characters, kind of how the, how the plot unfolds, how it eventually unfolds, is just by complete and utter stupidity. These people do not feel like they are... Uh, trained astronauts or they should be trained space explorers you know just taking off their mask really willy-nilly taking almost no precaution stepping onto a new planet there's parts of it that feel adventurous in that way where it's a it's a new planet and then there's parts of it it just does not feel grounded which i get that you can't always you can't take the time to show a full getting into a s correct space suit and just how clunky that is i that's some of the kind of one of the the good things about the first one is just how clunky they're walking around those big ass suits you know it's hilarious and and like the technology that they're using and the how it you know looks like v vhs tvs that's supposed to be the future but then prometheus is set before that and it looks like they have newer technology than alien i mean that's not something that you should necessarily gripe on the, the the characters are just and it, it's pissing me off because that's what drives the plot that's what they get the little little serpent worm or whatever they become zombies i guess and they start attacking people and it's just like oh. it's just it's not satisfying to see that it's not satisfying to see idiots die and then that's what cat like that's what moves the plot along what is an interesting plot point is david for creation's sake killing Elizabeth Shaw's husband, that one guy who was in Upgrade, Logan Marshall Green, getting him to drink that um, because he can see through his humanity how he's pissed off that uh, they didn't actually find anybody. They just found kind of more, more signs. You know, he's, and then David's able to recognize that and uh, take advantage of that. Slip him the, uh, the old alien seed, and then impregnate uh, Elizabeth Shaw, who is played by. I've never knew me. How do you, how do how how do you say her name? We're gonna look this up in real time here. Numi? 
No, how, how do you think? New, is it, it can't be Numi. What do you think it is? Numi? Numi. Numi Rapace. It is Numi. She's really great in this. The initial reaction to Prometheus was that the trailers maybe led on to be a little more chaotic and horror uh, laced than uh, it seemed, which is probably true. It's a lot slower. It's a lot of just like walking around and again, stupid scientists being stupid. <laughs> so it's just not fast. It's not. Um, it's not satisfying to see that all unfold in that way. And then Alien Covenant comes out five years later. That was, I had seen, I think, all of the Alien films up until then. So Alien Covenant was very highly looked up to from, from, this, from this person, from me. I saw it, I watched it in theaters, and I just kind of was just like, okay. I could. Uh, it's another complicated film because it's just gorgeous to look at, and it kind of tricks you into like how well it's shot and how well it's built up in the the first act and into where they they land on the the planet. You're like totally with them. You're like this is amazing. Like you know stuff is gonna go down, but then when st stuff go starts going down, it's just them stepping on a thing and people again being stupid going off on their own and just sniffing putting their noses and things and it's like yeah I'm just, I'm just gonna go over here and take a piss actually I'm gonna smoke you know we're just on a new planet but we're just gonna have, not gonna have any protocol you wish they, they would have done something different from the, for the first one because it's idiots propelling the plot along and it it convolutes what is going on. I'm so confused what exactly the point of this point of these films are because it seems like they're building towards the creation of the perfect xenomorph that we eventually do see. At least that's what David is trying to do by the end of it. It comes out these like white xenomorph dogs. By the end, you get the the face hugger onto the guy of the little little dude standing up and like mimicking David, and that's like pretty close to the, the xenomorph but it's not quite i don't think it's not quite supposed to be the 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 right one and then there's another one i i guess i will say i just quick gripe that i do have with how they shot the horror in this is just, it's just it indulges way too much in the horror it shows the xen the alien xenomorphs in full shots many times for a long amount of time and it completely pushes away the perfect cinematography and editing of the first Alien. Ridley Scott did that himself. It's, to me, it, f it feels like for Prometheus and Alien Covenant both, they got scripts which have sprinkles of good ideas, probably good enough scripts to be made into $100 million productions. Ridley Scott came on and it's like, okay, we're set. We're set. We're gonna make money. We're gonna make a good film. And it almost feels like there was like studio interference, which just does not seem like that could be true. Especially in Alien Covenant, things just ramp up, and you there's so much going on. You got David and Walter, two Michael Fast managers, like flirting with each other with a skin flute, and. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love Michael Fast, um, Michael Fassbender. It's just confusing. Some good things about Alien Covenant. Once the horror does turn, like once things start going bad, and that just that there's the music of the dun 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 dun. It's like kind of like a heartbeat, and it's just like it kind of builds. It just builds, it builds, it builds. He's very good at that. And the the first turn, the first turn of everything flipping over on its head. I, I love a new synthetic. Michael Fassbender to play the mother. I'm on my way. <laughs> I think they, I think that's his first line. On my way, mother. You know he's got the hard R um, as a British, as a Brit British doing the American accent, hard R. But I think it, it comes in a full circle with David's character because obviously he shows up. It still listens to our commands, but they have a drive of their own, 
It's not qu quite a soul. It's like a... Because he, he hates humans. He literally says that. So it's maybe a little bit theatrical for AI, at least in terms of now, but it is still a cautionary tale. David's fascination with creation, even killing the person that he probably loved. I think he, he really liked Elizabeth Shaw, but he split her open and did um, experience, experiments on her just to create the perfect thing. And I think his ultimate goal here is to destroy humanity, I guess. They're going to destroy themselves, I think is what he thinks. A, a very frustrating thing they did with um, Alien Covenant was the deleted scenes. I feel like there's a ton that they definitely should have put in, or like they they uh, they dropped them on YouTube as shorts and stuff like that, leading up to the release, which is just very baffling. Because I don't think anybody who's watching that, the general audience, is <laughs> gonna completely go by that. So it leaves holes in the films. It seemed like they had James Franco for an hour. He got in a pod to burn up. It makes him feel a lot more like a crew because it's a lot more understood that they're all couples going along to this new planet to repopulate. And it, it raises it raises the stakes in that way because in the, in, the, in the film, it's completely lost that they're trying to save humanity here, I think. And it's just like, they're, they're a small space crew out and they go on a planet that they shouldn't have gone on to. And then they all die. Like It's like, oh, okay, it's another alien movie. These films are the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing and expecting different results, different slash better results. Prometheus also had a lot of extra deleted scenes, which are fascinating because it explores Wayland a lot more. I think that would have been a plus to put in. So yeah, there is another alien film. I know Fede Alvarez is doing it. Ridley Scott's producing it. He's not doing it anymore, which I think is perfectly fine. Fede Alvarez, I think, should be a good fit. The, the, the guy who did um, Don't Breathe and the Evil Dead remake from 2013. There'll definitely be probably a lot more horror, from at least from the, the horror side of what people are looking for. Even though I, Alien, it's not blood and guts. The first alien. Aliens, maybe a little bit more. Which I don't, I don't know where that came from. Maybe that <laughs> they're thinking of a Resurrection for some reason. there I think there was supposed to be another prequel in the works with Ridley, Ridley Scott, but that just like drops. Cause it's just confusing. Like I'm so confused what they're trying to do with these. Are they trying to connect them to the alien films or not? Are they, What's the goal? And it's fine maybe not knowing that and you're gonna figure it out maybe the third one, but to have no idea what they're doing, I think, cause it just feels like they're just making alien movies and like yeah it's set before the first one who cares we're making another alien film i don't think it's necessarily me and my generation expecting everything to be connected every sequel to be connected another stupid thing was that alien covenant was supposed to be a direct sequel to prometheus in a, in a pretty obvious way elizabeth shaw is just dead they have deleted scenes of her in it like why couldn't that have been in the the prologue. I mean, I love the prologue with David and Waylon talking. That's probably the, <laughs> the best part of Alien Covenant is the first five minutes. Their disregard for the other films in their franchise is just baffling. It's strange that I, I feel like I'm dissing on these two films more than I'm not, but really still keep them in the, in the positive, at least. I like them more than I don't. I really do. They're, they're, they're really f fun and exciting sci-fi films. Yeah. We're not getting any other highly profound, on a big scale like this, sci-fi films. We just don't get that anymore. And it's somebody like Ridley Scott that is the one that do it, or you know Denis Villeneuve. It did just come out that Ridley was a little mad that he did the Alien Covenant film instead of um, Bla uh, the Blade Runner sequel, which I would uh, not in a million years would I have flipped that around. Ridley Scott post. I haven't seen Gladiator, but I think probably like around, from like you know, 2000 and on, his workflow at that age is astonishing and super, you know, just motivational just for, you know, a stupid little man like me. But his track record is, <laughs> uh, I mean, House of Gucci's is goofy. You know, The Martian was really good. You like that? Um, the, the Last Duel is really good, but I'm not gripping to go back and watch that anytime soon. I know he's done a lot in this century. I just haven't seen quite a bit from this this century, you know. I've only seen Blade Runner once and it was the final cut. Can you believe that? I've seen Blade Runner 2049 like five or six times. <laughs>
but I have seen Alien five or six times. Two times in theaters. I always love this world of Alien because the first film is so good. They set up so much and they leave so much mystery that you can just pull a random skeleton and make a whole two movies off of it. You know, I'm, I'm excited about uh, Fede Alvarez's movie because New Blood, quite literally. I think we're going to call it there. So, yeah, I'm going to... This has been Andrew talking a little bit about some alien films here, so we'll see you later. <laughs>